step one. We're gonna pull the drain plug out. Let's figure out what size it is. Seventeen millimeter. Make sure your washer's still on your, your drain plug. Your magnet's clean. No metal particles. Very important. I try to wait till all the oil is done draining out before I put the plug back in. Now we're going to move into our oil filter, as you can see right behind the air compressor. Driver's side behind the air, air intake. Now it's time for the oil filter. I typically put these on hand tight. And this was no exception. Messy job, but needs to be done. Now, I will tell you, I put those on hand tight, but some people might not be able to put them on tight enough. So, once you get them all up to the gasket touching, try to go half to three quarter turn past the gasket touching. I recommend three quarters turn, but you do what you feel comfortable. Now, let's get our new filter. Primed with oil because I always put a little oil in them before I put them up, but not too much oil so that it spills out all over my arm when I lift it up there. Let's get going. Let's do our mileage. Okay, that's good, enough. that's good enough for me. We're about filled about right here. I don't want to get too full because when I go to put it up, I have to tilt it side to side a little bit. I don't want the oil running out the side of the filter. 
Paper towels and gloves are your friends here. Right here, I've just wiped off the, the filter base to make sure I didn't leave my old quad ring up top and just get everything cleaned up a little bit. Now I'm just going to lift it straight up in the hole. camera's catching everything. I apologize. It is just me doing this. So you have to bear with me. If you have any questions, just uh, hit me up in the comments. I'd be glad to help out anybody. In this video, I'm also going to try to uh, give you folks a little inside tips on what to look for as far as other maintenance items on the truck that aren't covered a lot on the internet, but we'll go through a few things. <sighs> okay, so now we've drained our oil, removed our oil filter, Marked our new oil filter with a date and the mileage in a couple different spots so we can read it from any angle. Put oil on the filter about three quarters of the way full. Installed the filter about three quarters of a turn tight after the gasket touched. Now it's time to put our oil in the motor and get it up to operating level. Let's do it. And while we're working on the truck, and since we're working on the truck, I noticed right here this white stuff. It's coming out out of my my uh, overflow tank right here. That's, that's coolant. I can tell that's coolant right there. So, we'll have to keep an eye on that. Get everything cleaned up well. And we'll keep an eye on this because it should be pushing coolant out. It could be a couple of things. It could be this cap, which I have replaced this cap when I rebuilt the motor. I put a new cap on it along with all the new hoses on the motor. But it could be a faulty cap or the tank could be bad, which would be my suspect item because I can actually see right below here a little bit of trace of uh, something looks like antifreeze down here at the bottom. See it by my fingernail? I'm thinking the tank might be going bad, so we might have to put a tank in this truck before long. First guy I'll start off with is the one we topped off the oil filter with. Gallon number two. Gallon number three. Now I'm going to pull out the dipstick and see where our oil level's at. Not sure if this takes three or four gallons, maybe three and a half. My memory's not as good as it once was.
was thinking about a two quarts back up in there. It's a little, it's a little on the low side. I'm gonna try to get all the way to the top of the full line. Actually, you know what? We're gonna hold off on the extra two quarts. We're gonna let it drain down to the bottom of the pan. We'll fire it up and see where it's at after we, we run the motor, okay? Now we're gonna do our fuel filter right behind me. First thing I'm gonna do is unplug our water sensor. That filter's a little tighter. Oh yeah, I remember this one. It's a real joyful piece. Yes, I do know there's a drain right here. I'm not worried about it. It's not that big of a deal. I pull the whole thing off and I just put it right in the, in the drain bucket. Now on this one, there's this little quad ring. You need to make sure you get, get off of it. Okay, so I got the new quad ring. I'll place it right up here. All right, I just opened up that new guy to oil. Put a little bit on my finger to put it on the seal here. Put a little bit up here also. I'll tighten this back up. Now notice I didn't put any fuel in this filter. This truck has an electric pump on it. I'm gonna cycle the key three or four times to try to prime it up, okay? Good tip for helping get that filter a little tighter, put a rag in your hands. I just heard the fuel pump start loading up. If you listen to it, you can actually hear it change pitch. I don't know if you can hear that on the camera, but I can actually hear the fuel pump change the pitch. A little fire sucker up, see what it does. Here. Oil pressure came up. We're good. That's the motor started right up. It didn't have to be primed up or anything like that. I just put the fuel filter on it dry and let the key cycle long enough. Notice how the motor didn't surge or, or go crazy on the first fire up? It's because I put the fuel filter on dry. I let it cycle the key out far enough that I actually can listen to the fuel pump my engine cowling off. I can hear the fuel pump start loading up. And once I hear that fuel pump load up, it actually changes the pitch of sound. I know my fuel filter should have fuel to it at that time. I waited till then, I cycled it one more time, just be on the safe side, and fired it up. Now we'll go outside and just check for leaks. Well, well everything looks good underneath there. Everything looks good right there. Our next job now is to lube the chassis. Let's get started. Here's a little tip for you guys. When you're checking your power steering fluid, 
right here. Couple tip. Not only do you need to check your power steering fluid, but this is a band clamp, a V-band clamp, holds this top on. There's actually a filter down below here. So if you haven't serviced that in a while, that might be something you want to consider doing. I have changed this one out this year already, so I'm good to go. This is something for you guys that, that have a truck that you just recently bought and don't know the maintenance of it, is to change out this, this power steering filter. Any big truck shop will have that filter here or a Freightliner dealership. This is a, a MT45 chassis. So basically, I go to Freightliner to buy some parts, and I go to some big rig shops, you know, where they, where they buy parts for the big rigs. I go to there and buy filters and stuff. But all the filters you see on here are actually Cummins filters that I buy. Another tip, always inspect your hub oil. Notice how mine is clean, and this is your drain right here. So. If you take this drain out, there's a magnet on it, but it'll have to be to the top, of course, so we won't drain our, our axle oil out. But check that magnet for, for metal particles. That'll let you know you're having a bearing issue going on, and you can prevent that from happening. If you haven't changed these out recently, within the past year or two, and you put a lot of miles on, you might want to change out the oil. Just Basically, if you pull the truck up on some wood on one side, let the side go low, you pull this out. When it's facing down, down low like this, it'll drain the, the axle of oil. Then just level the truck out and fill it through this hole right here up to the appropriate si level. I like to go a little high and let it seep in because it will have to fill the whole cavity. So check it in a day or two after you filled it just to make sure it's all good. 7590 weight is what Meritor suggested for this axle and that's what I have in it, synthetic. Pull enough weight to get that the weight off this tire. I'll show you. We're going to grease the kingpin now. So I have the weight off this tire. Green, clean up my grease circ so we don't try to pump dirt back into our fittings. So some here, the tie rod ends right here. We're going to knock it out too. I see my grease pumping out the back side, so we're good on that bottom side of Kingpin. Grease out the top of the kingpin.
only did four pumps in this one. I try not to blow the, the seal out. I know some people like to see the grease come out. I just give it enough to know it's got a little grease in it. Call it a day. Okay, here we're going to do our drag link. On this particular link, they don't have the sealed boots, so we're going to go a little bit heavier on these because we see grease come out. So, our grease. It's kingpins again. See our grease come through? We're good. Alright, our next bit. Change out our Allison oil filter. Odd to change the color on me, it used to be red. Let's go ahead and knock that out. To do this, I actually put a little bit of the transmission fluid into the filter. And I do fill that filter all the way to the top. I'll tell you people, there's a lot of imitation parts out there too you have to be very leery of. The Chinese are infiltrating our parts, so you guys buying stuff from Amazon and eBay, be careful. A lot of it's garbage. Now this particular filter, there's a magnet you have to be careful of. You don't ever want to throw the magnet away. Here's our magnet. I'm going to inspect it. It looks good. I'm going to wipe it all down, clean it up, and put it right back in. Do not throw these away. 
Like this truck, when I first got it, literally someone had thrown away the magnet. I had to go buy a new magnet to put back in here. One of the previous services. Very common to find that magnet missing. I don't have anything to mark this filter with because it's black. But I do log everything in my phone that I happen to be using to film this with. So I will put this in my main, on my maintenance chart. Now pay note, there is a filter inside here. I have replaced it at one point in time. When I did the motor rebuild, I pulled this apart, replaced the filter inside, and replaced all the fluid in it with a, uh, the Allison Sensodyne transmission fluid. Um, but it is due for another transmission fluid change here soon. I know Allison says it's good for 100,000 miles, but this truck is always under a load. So I will replace it right around 30,000. Plus, I didn't know who owned this truck before, and I could tell you, judging by the truck, the maintenance they were doing was not up to par. So I'm just trying to bring everything back up to make this truck a, a little bit better. So our next deal, we'll move back here to the drive line. We're gonna start lubricating all of our U joints all the way back. Like the uh, regular joints, you grease until you see a little bit of grease come out. That's all I need to it. Otherwise, it literally slings grease everywhere when the truck starts going, which it's still going to do, but we try to minimize that. That's grease, that's U joint number one. The thing I like checks the, the carrier bearing. Is the carrier bearing. Try to wiggle the shaft, make sure it's not loose up in here. If you see a lot of movement up in here, you do for a carrier bearing, you, you, you probably feel a vibration in the chassis. Also check the bolts holding it on, make sure they're all tight. You don't want anything loose. I gotta hurry up, the battery's gonna die, so let me get done with the rest of these, uh, let me help with the differential oil. This plug has a magnet on it. You should pull this out and inspect your oil. Your oil level should be very close to the very top, bottom of this hole right here. If not, you need to add some. There's a drain right here. Let's see if I can get you down low enough. There's your drain right there for the, for the rear differential. If you pull that out and the stop plug, you can drain out the oil and then refill it using this hole. Put, put your plug back in the bottom and refill from right here. I forgot how, many, how much oil it took, but I, I replaced this also when I first got the truck with a uh, Lucas 75 140 gear oil. Um, if you're buying a new truck or have a used truck, it's always nice to pull this out. Just double check there's no metal fragments in here, the oil's not glittered up, and that it's not too burnt. It'll turn black on you. So, oh. Alright, let's check the oil one last time after running the truck. Got yeah, about the midway point. I'm gonna go ahead and just give that extra quarter to.
on the full mark. Perfect. Okay, now let's go over a few things that we talked about in the video. We did our PM service. Let's just go over a couple things that we should take a look at when we change our oil, lube our chassis, and change our fuel filter. One, let's not forget about our power steering fluid and our filter inside, which we take this clamp off right here, the hose clamp. It's like a V-band clamp, actually. Take this off, this whole top comes off. There's a filter, filter down below. So when you take this top off, there's a filter down below here that unscrews and you replace it. Also, we want to check the condition of our belt. Make sure it's not frayed, cracked, or broken anywhere. This belt only got 20,000 miles on it. So I'm pretty sure we're good. And the belt tensions are all new. We changed out our fuel filter. Remember, I made sure I replaced the quad ring on the inside, the, the inside one on the threads. I replaced that with the new one. I lubed everything with oil, and I cycled the key till I heard the fuel pump change pitch and tone, and I did it one more time to make sure my fuel filter was filled with fuel. We greased all of our joints. We checked our hub oil, make sure it's clean. Also, make sure there's no metal inside. You can pull this out, dip your finger in there if you need to to see what it looks like. This is the vent. Always make sure it's clean, not obstructed. If it gets obstructed, it'll literally start pushing oil out. So make sure it's always clean. Check our coolant level. We should also check our brake fluid while we're at it. Air filter. Check all your all your hoses and belts. This concludes my service on my Cummins 5.9, the 2007 step van. Leave me a comment if you have any questions or comments. Thank you.